Okay, let's get outside of the studio now, thanks to uh, the technology of Google Hangout, with uh, Kyler Broadus, founder of Trans People of Color Coalition. Coalition, thank you, Kyler, for being with us tonight. We appreciate it. Uh, coming to us from, I believe, Washington D.C. Correct me if I'm wrong. Well, actually, I just flew back in from Washington oh. D.C., so I'm a lot closer than you think, but not close enough. Bay <laughs> Missouri. Okay, fair enough. Well, I'm glad you uh, you had a safe travel. Uh, home. Uh, we've talked a lot about sexual orientation tonight. Talk about uh, gender identity, gender expression. How is that different? How is that connected to what we're talking about tonight? Well, uh, the T was added uh, to the LGB community uh, some time ago, and there's always been whether we should be there or not. And it's logical for me since I uh, was schooled in the gay movement, the le lesbian movement. Uh, which I came out of. And so it seems like a logical connection since most of us are discriminated against based on our presentation, our gender presentation, not necessarily who we sleep with. So are the issues similar that we're talking about tonight? There are overlapping issues, you know, some will differ in that, you know, uh, you know, transgender deals with a sense of who I am rather than a sense of who I am going to be with. Uh, but the issues are that we are still ostracized uh, in, by everybody in society, and I do think it's in the same way. Is there a downside to being the T in the LGBT, some issues that don't get discussed when you're a part of that larger group? Well, that's a great question, Casey, and certainly there are. There, there are numerous because our coming out process is different. Uh, I think that we're ostracized in the LGB movement, and that's been the case that uh, uh, AJ talked about into earlier, and I've worked on that uh, for years in the working group. I testified last year before the Senate and the drafting committees and lobbying on that legislation, but there's always been this great divide in the community of whether we belong or not. And as history will give us, uh, starting with the Stonewall riots, uh, who was there? We all were there uh, fighting for equality, and shouldn't everybody have equality anyway? Um, correct me if I'm wrong here, but is there an element of uh, a transgender person wanting to live their life as a man or as a woman? Does that uh, silence them to some degree in terms of activism and, and wanting to be uh, vocal in the issues that you're talking about? Well, Casey, I do want to give that prod, uh, transgender, pardon me, is an umbrella term, which includes people like me that are transsexual, but it also includes people that express their gender identity in various ways. So some of us do wish to uh, live their life as a man, like I always feel that I have been and, and living my life, and some of us do wish to live our lives as women, but perhaps at birth we were not assigned that gender marker for a doctor that sexes us in 30 seconds. And what scientists realized just in 1997 was that the brain is a sex organ also. So that we can't just judge people by external, external genitalia, it's much more complex than that. So I um, hope that answers your question. Well, I, and does that play a role in a person's willingness or unwillingness to be active in uh, speaking out about the issues we're talking about tonight? Yeah, and, and, and it certainly does. Because some of us choose not to because it seems easier to navigate the world due to safety issues and concern, concerns because the death rate and the suicide rate are extremely high, even higher than in, for lesbians and gay or trans, transgender people. And I'm sorry, I shortened it to trans because we have sort of started to do that to get rid of the stigma that has been associated with transgender, uh, only meaning reassigning one sex after uh, transition. Um, uh, in, enlighten us for some other challenges that we may not be bringing up tonight. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, financial or as we've alluded to, then we'll talk more about uh, medical. Well, there, there are huge challenges because once we come out, it is the transition, should we choose to do it, is extremely costly. For a transgender man, that can be upwards to six figures. Transgender women may be lucky to be under that, but it's extremely costly. Most insurers don't cover it. We are starting to see Fortune 500 companies, as Professor Lieberman spoke of earlier, provide more coverage. Uh, HRC, the Human Rights Campaign, has included it in its equality uh, index so that those companies that want to get 100% now must offer benefits and coverage for transgender or transsexual uh, reassignment issues. Uh, including therapy and other physical issues. The American Psychological Association and the Amer American Medical Association have both indicated that this is a medical condition and a treatable condition. Uh, and I so hope, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. 
and as and hopefully through that more and more companies will start to provide the coverage uh you know it's it's egregious uh, one people can't be employed because they're transgender even i come to you employed and look gainfully employed but i'm one of the lucky few uh, most of us are terminated just because of our transgender status or if we're outed uh at work then uh, we're terminated as well as abused so um the suicide rate for generally is 12 percent overall for the transgender community and it's even higher for people of color that intersect or that intersectionality of color and gender uh it's almost 50 percent what other what other challenges what other unique challenges are there at that intersection that you're talking about of color and gender uh, well, most of those people work in what we call shadow economies uh, because they already have the discrimination based on race and now you couple that with gender, they're not even getting into the door of an agency and it's not that they choose, but they're stigmatized as choosing uh, these shadow economies. Uh, but the fact is, we look at American employment, the employment rate based on race, and it's severely drastic. And the same thing then crosses over when we add gender to that factor. Uh, so most of us don't have employment, and most of us, uh, if we are, employed at less than $10,000 per year. Wow. Uh, Kyler brought us. Thank you for uh, your time tonight and for adding to this conversation. We appreciate your, your time. Thank you very much. Well, thank you. All right.